Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca, and this is Damian. Good afternoon. We are really happy to be the ones who wrap up the Challenge Future Youth Forum and the final event co hosted by Out of the Box. Out of the Box is a series of events happening in Maribor. And Challenge Future is a global youth community of problem solvers. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, yeah. okay. But if you're wondering what this is, this is what Challenge Future and Out of the Box meet. So this is you and this is the project you'll see. Okay, and you'll see the work done in the last three days by the selected 80 Challenge Future youth members from 35 countries. Yes, and they've been working really hard for those three days. And they've been working in three pillars, so the challenges were divided in three categories. So the categories were the startups, the existing Maribor companies, and the social entrepreneurs. So we had 18 teams competing, and it was really hard to put 10 of them on stage to pitch live again for you on this same stage. And of course, finally, we'll announce three winners, one for each category plus the grand winner. And because we don't want to be just another event you quietly listen, we'll ask each one of you to be an active participant. So what that means is that you have a responsibility. So during this three exciting hours, you have to come up with a commitment for Maribor, even if you're not from Maribor. So you can tweet it, you can use the hashtag that's behind me, commit to Maribor, MB, and the hashtags are also all around you. And if you're not on Twitter, don't worry, that's not an excuse. So you can still write them down and hand it to us after the event. So please, no excuses here. And of course, if you're wondering what are those art masterpieces all around us, those are creations by the 6 to 14 years old. Uh, this is their vision of Maribor in the future. Thanks again to all of the young artists from Franz Rosman Stane. And of course, thanks to all the partners and sponsors that make all this happen. So thanks again. And of course, one thing before we begin, uh, we'll invite Nadia and Dan from Challenge Future to get you in the mood. So that's the true Challenge Future spirit you get now. So Nadia, please. Hello, everyone. How are you feeling today? Great. Uh, what's the mood in the room? Give me the words. So what are you feeling today? Excitement? Nervous? Nervous? We have a lot of nervous people here. Well, that probably is the voice of the teams that still have to come to the stage and present. How about the Maribor community? What are you feeling today? Excited? Anything else? Well, I think they're not yet warmed up, so it's time to get them warmed up. Dan? <laughs> okay, so uh, my task now to get you boiling. All right. For the next exercise, I would kindly ask you to stand up. <laughs> Please stand up. It doesn't matter if you are a judge, CF community member, partner. Please stand up. Okay, so everybody stands up, we're good to go. Some of you know the exercise from yesterday, some of you don't. But do you all know what's a hippodrome? What's a hippodrome? Horses. What? A drum for hippos. Perfect. What do horses do in hippo and hippos on a hippodrome? They run. They run from where? What, what do they do? For life. I say, let's be jockeys right now and go on the hippodrome. Are, are we ready? Do you agree? Shall we go? Shall we compete? Yep, go, yep. Ah, okay, so you don't want to. Do you want to go on the hippodrome? Okay, that's more like it, that's more like it. So, the main thing on a hippodrome when you're a jockey is that you compete, right? And this is the move that you are doing. Let's try the move. 
Everybody, let's compete. All right. So now that we are competing, suddenly we need to take left. So do take left, otherwise. So. Very good, very good, very good. Or you can take right. Dan, I see you're going just forward. Good. Suddenly, there is a tree coming, so you need to go down. Afterwards, there's an obstacle. You need to go up. Careful, the ones with the benches. Careful, just a bit. OK, you go up. Then, there is a water hole, so you need to go down. OK, so we're running, we're running. Then, we pass the rich people uh, part. And The smile is very important, so. <laughs> very good. Then we pass the crazy people. Woo! OK, so now that you know what we have to do, can we race? Can we see who was the first one to get there? At the finish? Ready? Steady? Steady second? Go. We go, we go, we go, we go. We take left. We go, we go, we go. We take another left. We go, we go. We take right. Obstacle. <laughs> Another obstacle. <laughs> Three. <laughs> rich people. More rich people. There is no crisis. <laughs> All right. We go, we go, we go. Water. <laughs> we go, we go, we go, we go. Rich people again. My God, what happened? The crisis passed. Way to go. We go, we go, we go. Crazy people. <laughs> Left. <laughs> obstacle. Another left, another right, off the go, three, water, left, right, and we're there! So now that we are all warmed up, all warmed up, the blood is here, pumping, and you got a little bit of challenge future and out of the box spirit, I want to invite here a very special group of people. As a part of Challenge Future Academy, all the countries that were represented at the summit, and that's 35 countries, had a chance to speak a little bit about how it is to do business in their own country. What does it look like? What does it feel like to do business in their own country? And there was one country that we felt deserves the right to do their little skit again in front of all of us, because their message is the best message for the start of this out-of-the-box event. So I invite to the stage Slovenia. Okay, for the beginning, it, it's very important to note that the following is very sarcastic and should not be taken seriously at all. Hello, gentlemen. I have a proposal for you. Do I have five minutes of time? I have this uh, great uh, idea that will help no, your I'm company. Not Thank you. Come on, uh, it's, it's a product that will increase your productivity by 20%. Sir, please. Do you have? No? Thank you. Thank you for the time. Hello. Uh, my name is Marusha. Could I just kindly ask you if you could like take 10 minutes? Because I just graduated from university. Hello. Uh, like maybe, I just, you know, sure. No. <laughs> How do you look? Okay. Perfect. Good really? luck. I'm so nervous, you know. Self-confidence. <gasps> I am just, breathing, you know, I'm just waiting for this. <gasps> go, go, go. Good Wait. Night. Okay. Hello. My name is Natalia. Hello, Natalia, it's a pleasure. Hello, Natalia. Well, I was following your company for 
quite a long time. Um, I just studied um, international relations. We're actually looking for an architect. Well, actually, I did the second studies, architecture. We're actually looking for a structural engineer. Well, but I, I really like this company. I think I can contribute to it. Sure. Thank you. How cannot? Come? I'm so, you know. I mean, I just, yeah, I just tried to, to, to convince, hello. What happened? Why am I so excited? Why am I so Yes, you know, it was just like, this like the company that I'm really, I really like them and I would like to work for them. Yes. They rejected you? Like, yes, they, they didn't even me. listen. No, what's that? No. And I had this, uh, this opportunity for them that will increase their, you know, market share and stuff. And they were just like, no? You're looking for an architect, you know, really? business company. Really? Yeah. I mean, if we can, like, screw them, we can do this ourselves. <laughs> what do we do? Yes, but yes, that's good. Why not? What What is your field? Um, well, I just graduated from economics and uh, Harvard University. Good economy. Yeah, that's good. Don't respect that. Never. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so yes, international relations, and you're from. Um, I do um, engineering. So. But that's what we need. Of course, we need him. So let's do it, let's okay? Do it let's, do let's do it, it alone. Let's do it alone. With this spirit of taking control of your life and doing something good for yourself, but more importantly for the community, we are bringing to you these innovations. And with that, I pass it back to Damian and Rebecca. Yes, thanks, Nadia. Thank you. Okay, now that we are in the mood, we would like to invite director of University of Maribor and the father of the out-of-the-box seminars, Daniel Rebol, to greet all of you. Hello again. Um, well, I would rather say the grandfather of out of the box. It, it's not that old, but um, it is changing constantly. And uh, I could say the father now is Marco Samet, who is uh, also the coordinator here somewhere. Yeah, there. Um, it all started just a few years ago. Um, I just got very inside, uh, excited by the the, the power of, of those open seminars. I was um, attending quite often at Stanford, being there for a while, and I thought, well, we do have seminars here at our university, but they are more or less very focused, you know, mathematicians talk to mathematicians and biologists to biologists, and no one else cares. So, on the other hand, I do know that there are very many great ideas in this community. So I thought, well, how should we get this out and start to exchange and share those crazy ideas? Then first I thought it could be the crazy idea seminar or something, but well, at the end we decided uh, for out of the box, thinking, ideas and so on. First seminar was quite successful, the second a bit less, the third I got a bill from the university for, for the, um, to pay the, for the room and uh, so it was somehow, um, it had its down, but then suddenly it became more and more popular. Uh, people recognized that they can really benefit if they hear to a mathematician or a biologist, that, that those patterns or those ideas are actually quite universal. Of course, that mathematician should not talk in a very mathematic language only. And so this series started to become more and more popular. And as you can see, now we have this merge with Challenge Future and I expect that uh, it will become even more popular. In the meantime, we also organized a conference 
last year. It was a great success. Um, we had some famous people here with wonderful ideas from very different areas uh, so that uh, it became very obvious that those sparks actually emerge at the cross sections of various fields and not within, in, in the core. Um, I think you have recognized this already being in teams that are interdisciplinary and uh, that you actually gain from each other new expertise, new perspectives and this is wonderful, isn't it? So, uh, I'm very excited about hearing what the teams will tell us today. I expect some including crazy ideas and um, yes, let's go for them. Thanks. Uh, thank you, dear rector. And now I would invite Andrea Codrin, uh, the founder of Challenge Future, and the one who actually brought us all here in Maribor. It's her stubbornness, actually. Thank you. I think that I done the job because that was my commitment. I can go now. That's my commitment for Maribor to bring the event here. So shortly, if to explain what the Challenge Future is, I would need a few hours. So we will skip that part. But what I would like to say is that um, yesterday we listened to our dear colleague from India, Sartaj. Where are you? Okay, and you said, when you have a dream, you need to have a people that are following and co-sharing the dream. Otherwise, it will be just a dream. But from, from the dream, we need to come to the idea and implementation. So it was also with this event here in Maribor. I was born here and I'm very connected to this city regardless. I'm not living here and I'm not working here. And traveling around and finding out what great things we are doing with the Challenge Future worldwide in so many countries, I said, okay, maybe I can do something for the city where I was born. And here was the dream, however, you know, I need to find the people who would co-share this dream. Without them, there would be no event. So the first, it was Richter of University of Maribor that I'm very grateful to support. And after that, we found the partners from the Institute of the Project Management, Professor Vrichko, the whole team of Podim and of Tovarna Podimo who supported and amazing girls from the Wings Wide Open. And um, especially, I was very happy to see that there is also the business, not just because they also sponsor some of our events, but also because they have a really interest, interest to do for a Maribor, to do something amazing. And that this is Terme Maribor and Nakabama. So, I hope that we will see great ideas tonight and let's start. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea Codrin. Okay, let's get started with the fun part. Before that, a short disclaimer. We were not judging the companies and the startups, but the particular solutions prepared by the Challenge Future members. So the, solution, the solutions were judged based on these criteria, Damian. So, first one, innovativeness. Second one, feasibility. Third one, social impact and impact for Maribor. Fourth one, customer satisfaction. And finally, sustainability. Yes, as one of the judges, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I was involved also here yesterday in the judging panel. And I have to say, I don't know if I can say that, it's a secret, but it was really intense. So it, I know at least three judges or four, I'm looking at them here. They're not talking to each other because it was really intense. Uh, so it was a really hard decision to get like I said before, the 10 teams on the stage, but here they are, and I think we are ready, right? Okay, the first one is the category Maribor Companies, the challenges presented by Igor Vrechko. Please come on stage, Igor. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, uh, we had uh, five challenges uh, from corporate group. Actually, behind those five challenges, there were four companies. 
And uh, for these five challenges, we prepared or we defined seven teams working on those challenges. Well, uh, corporates behind the challenges were Tevime Maibo, who gave us uh, two challenges. First one, first was about how to uh, how to deal with the problem, uh, which is uh, of course. Uh, 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 for which is responsible uh, drawing, dropping uh, industry in Maribor. So business hotels like Pyramida and uh, Hotel Oil are not so interesting for their customers anymore. So what to do to attract new uh, customers and how to use uh, uh, those uh, hotels in the city. Second uh, uh, case from, from Teume was about Hotel Habakuk and Hotel Bellevue in and Pohoje, actually. The idea was how to integrate strongly both hotels and uh, Pohoje and uh, maybe to attract completely new customers and completely new uh, market group, uh, which was not uh, uh, supported by the Teme before. Uh, second company we had was uh, Nova KBM, Bank from Maribor. Uh, and problem here or uh, idea behind it was how to refresh uh, co committants from bank. Well, the, the challenge was what should bank do to have to get new committants, younger committants, and how to attract them to stay their committants for the long run. Then the third company was uh, was. A media house Vecel. Vecel has similar problems as I just mentioned about Nova KBM. Vecel would also like to have a little younger readers who are not interested in reading so much anymore. So what can we do to attract new younger readers? And the last company who gave us a case for, for them was Le Cabinet Maribor Pharmacy from Maribor. Uh, who, are who are thinking about developing special new products and services for sportsmen's group. So that, was, uh, that were the cases and uh, we had seven teams working on them and four of them uh, went into final for today. Thank you. Thank you, Igor. Okay. Okay, thanks again, Igor. I, I see that Oscar has the timer. So I invite the first team. Uh, the team who is working on Innova KBM challenge, please go fast, fast, fast. Uh, thank you all for supporting them in advance. And again, a disclaimer, they have three minutes to pitch, so we will cut them. We are totally ruthless, so we'll cut them after three minutes. Okay, girls, you ready? Uh, just in case, Oscar can also help you because it's not working that fluently. Okay. Not our responsibility. Okay. Mature modern mine. These three words encompass where NKBM wish to be positioned in the future. Through the Triple M strategy, we will position NKBM as Slovenia's modern bank. To achieve this, our overall goal is to increase the annual retention ratio to the industry average of five to one by the end of December 2015. To achieve this, we are implementing a three-pronged strategy addressing three different target markets. These are the children, the students, and young adults. To target the students, we are, the children, we are implementing a bank kid strategy. Now this involves creating a competition where students can compete to be rewarded different points. The school who, is a, who achieves the highest ranking of points will be the winners, and they will be presented with 50 tablets. These tablets will have financial applications, education apps, and an NKBM app. So this will provide education not only the NKBM bank, but also will be a tool for other educational forms in Slovenian schools. This is a positive CSR initiative for the bank. Can you go? 
Uh, to target the students, we're implementing a Facebook app. So this is capitalizing on the proliferation of social media in this market. So through their app of the NKBM Bank, they would just have one click of a button and be able to transfer their money to their friends on Facebook. This will increase uh, brand awareness in the target market and attract this, uh, thank you, attract this market. Now to target the young adults, this is a very competitive market and therefore we recommend you only target high earners. Uh, this, is not, this market is not to increase new customers, but uh, more to foster relationships with them. So we will, so we will have a, sched, uh, a new app and a new bank account which will cater to their needs and also different activities throughout the year to develop these relationships and increase loyalty. We will also have a loyalty program which will encapsulate the three different target markets and will increase loyalty through these different rewards. Students will work through these stages which will create integration, uh, interactivity with the bank and increase brand awareness. Through our strategy, Triple M will achieve a five to one retention ratio, attract 20,000 new customers and increase loyalty by 80%. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, the second finalists are Terme Maribor, Developing City Hotels. Okay, just while the teams are coming on stage, uh, yes, the technical part. So the teams, please listen to me now. You have to be here and point your clicker there, right, Oscar? Or just say next with your left eye. Yeah, you can. You ready? And the judges, uh, please do great uh, each team after the presentations. So don't compare them, but just judge them by your perfect criteria. Okay, hello guys. Uh, we are a group uh, called Art. My name is Rok. Uh, this is Audrey, Tamara, Hi. and Ali. Uh, we will present you a case of uh, Terme Maribor uh, City Hotels who are uh, facing a problem uh, in the center of Maribor with Hotel uh, Pyramida and Hotel Oro. But first, uh, a few numbers. Uh, we found a target uh, niche group that is like uh, 55 uh, million uh, big uh, in size in Europe. Um, and the good news is that it will increase uh, by 2030 to 64 million. So um, we are talking about the diabetes uh, patients and uh, it, it's a very lucrative niche. Uh, it, we are talking about billions, okay? Okay, um, we also found in our statistics that one out of every three dollars spent on diabetic health is in the region of Europe. So anyway, why is Maribor the most suitable area for diabetic health? Well, because of course we know that Maribor is very green, it's very clean, and we have um, availability of very, very sophisticated and um, current facilities, and we have the availability of skilled specialists in this area. So these are the other things. Next slide. So combining the market potential and the suitability of Maribor, we wish to tap the medical tourism that is already emerging to create Termi Maribor Diabetes Health Touristic Packages to offer tourist packages that is not just a vacation but a way to improve the quality of life of people with diabetes and their families. So we wish to make Maribor the diabetic hub of of the world, maybe. So these are um, the details of the package. So we wish to create um, um, a tailored package for diabetic people with um, catering to their sugar food needs. And um, we create like yearly events and annual events. And we also wish to tap, you know, um, the diabetic health organizations to create their annual events and host it in Maribor. The next slide, please. Okay, we also prepared an effective uh, promotion based on monthly uh, uh, global searches and uh, monthly campaign costs. 
I'm talking about AdWord campaigns, uh, and uh, uh, we just uh, need to focus on the back end of the long tail strategy. But to make uh, things short, uh, it's possible to make a successful promotion. So we wish to tap um, other agencies like travel agencies, eco farms, medical centers, universities, hospitals, and NGOs such as um, the Foundation of European Nurses and Diabetes Alliance for European Diabetes Research. There are so many of them. So, thank you. Good job, guys. I, don't, I swear to you, I didn't scare them before, but they're all on time, and they weren't yesterday. Uh, so we did a good job. So the third team is ready. It's the team with chair, uh, the new media strategy, and there you go. Three minutes. OK. Well, we were honored with the uh, corporate uh, challenge of Richard Media House, and we, uh, the name of our project is hashtag engage youth. Uh, with the hashtag, we want to send a strong social message. Well, the mission of the newspaper is delivering quality information, but the problem is that the young people are not, not buying that information, unfortunately. So we uh, offer solution in three steps. I will return to the solution in three steps, but first I'm going to speak. Okay, but first I'm going to speak about what should the content of the informa uh, information look like. So the content, uh, we have different target groups, but uh, the most important of this uh, slide is that the sustainability behind that, because uh, the newspaper should form uh, focus groups, should make questionnaires, should uh, gather the local knowledge f from the local people of here, and uh, um, that knowledge to use it in the newspaper. So, and uh, that should be a continual improvement all, all the time. So, our project uh, has three actions. The first action is reforming the culture of information. That means, at the beginning, we saw Vecher is delivering information. Now is we say that Vecher should uh, forward the information. That means they have to make new vision for them. The second uh, step is the su sustainability of Vecher and uh, making new platforms, redesigning. This is the key word. We cannot be very innovative with our solution, but we can play it very intel intelligently. And the third action is building recognition and loyalty and building branding, not with concerts, but uh, with education and with entrepreneurship events. I'll so my colleague now will speak about the figures. Our goal is to attract the use of Maribor and we can claim market share more than 80% uh, for three target groups of the youth. To fulfill our goal, we offer to redesign the website, which means uh, to update uh, illustrative part of the website and also to add two new columns which are um, one about education and another one about entrepreneurship. Uh, we also offer to, web to make a competition for startups. The best startups will have an opportunity to blog on Vetcher and make unique content as well by, by this way. Uh, the key partners will be universities, accelerators, incubators and social web networks. Uh, annual political forums like EPEC model could be conducted by Virtual and generate unique content as well. Um, we also propose to write in the corporate policy that every employee of Virtual uh, should forward Virtual news, um, like for, like for example through Facebook accounts. Uh, as it is our main risk that staff can reject to share corporate info. Thank you. <laughs> that the news create the news. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You can put it here. Yeah, they will hate me. I, I volunteer to be the hated one. And there's another thing to be hated for. Before uh, Rebecca announces the next uh, team, we'll confiscate this and. Oscar here, here is a really intelligent person, so he will sense when you will need to switch. So just really, just wink at him, 
and use your intelligence and uh, his ability to uh, speak with your mind. Yes, and press the button. Okay, last but not least, the fourth the theme and finalist, Terme Maribor, Developing Resorts, please. Hello, every Hello, everybody. My name is Natalia. Me and my teammates were working on a challenge with Terme Maribor. So the challenge was two things to find the right segment and to find the right product, okay? Because the revenue was drastically falling. There is a, yes, there is a certain uh, amount of people, 235 million of people are diagnosed with asthma disease. In Germany, 4 million. In Russia, 9 million. In ex yugo region, we have 7 million people. Every fourth in average is suffering from asthma more than cancer, more than heart disease. Next one, please. A lot of money. Okay, this is the wrong with the presentation. Anyway, a lot of money is involved in, 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 this, in, this, um, in this sphere because only Europe is spending 33 billions on treating asthma. Okay, so in the other hand, if you see um, this, this chart, you will see if you have like really severe form of, of, of asthma, you can spend up to almost 13,000 annually. Okay, next, next one, please. So our target group are those people here, asthmatics. So you see, like those people were taught how to respond, were taught how to recognize, and they were given an asthma management plan, okay? But they are still missing quite a lot to fulfill 100%. We are targeting not just those people that are lacking, but as well people that are already here. Why? Because when you have asthma, asthma you, can, you cannot cure asthma, you can only control it. Because those people need to come back because those people need fresh air, those people need activities, and Maribor as a whole, as, as, as a city, can offer them a lot, and as well, Terme. Terme Maribor, with the right package, they can offer them all this, plus all the things that Maribor can offer them. Okay, next one, please. Um, my asthma can be as well part of my Terme. My Terme, we are talking about five-star and four-star hotels. My Terme can be a really personalized approach um, for you as a, as a guest of a five-star hotel, okay? For example, if you, you've, you're a businessman, you're really stressed, you ate just hamburgers pre previous week, okay? So let's say that you come to Terme Maribor, they, according to your blood picture, will tell you what is lacking in your body. So all the food will be adjusted and you, like, you, like you're really stressed. You will need some psychologist and, of course, some physical um, activity as well. So you will feel like home. What? We are not selling Habakkuk. We are selling happiness. We are selling that you feel like home. Okay? Because if you go for five-star hotel, there is something plus. And that plus is are the feelings. So that will be it. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much. The second category is the startup. We invite Matei Rus to present the challenges, please. Thank you. So it is a long and excited weekend behind us. And uh, I must confess that uh, it was my pleasure to be together with the young talents around the globe and to, to work with them. Uh, in the group of startups, we had five projects and six teams. One project had two teams. And uh, so we uh, first challenge was connected with the Startup Maribor program itself. And the program is uh, meant to revitalize and to make, to make, to revitalize, 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 <laughs> forget it. <laughs> uh, to make Maribor an important entrepreneurial hub. And uh, we set the challenge that uh, the young people should give us ideas how to do it, how to do it the best way. And on this idea, there were two teams working on. Then uh, the second challenge was connected with the startup, high technology startup company Asaka, which developed the system for uh, road crossings, where you can see 
the sign that the car is coming, the train is coming, and you will not cross the road, or you will not cross the train road, and so you can save your life. And we ask young people around the world to find ideas how to, how to distribute the idea and the product information around the world so that governments and local communities will invest in this product, which is, which is cheap and much, much more efficient than than very expensive ones and to save lives. The third idea was connected with the Dora company, which developed the IT solution for the uh, surgeries, uh, where the surgeon can, um, can uh, view pictures and videos from the patients with the help of movement of hands. He doesn't he don't, he don't need anymore to leave the surgery room and then clean uh, his, uh, his hands three, two or three times in every surgery. So, and they, they, can, they can cut the, the time to half an hour. Um, okay, the, the challenge was how to make the best marketing around the world. Then uh, the E-Forma, uh, also the high technology startup from the University Business Incubator, they developed the platform for uh, for managing constructional processes, if you build a house, you know how many how many workers you need, how many companies you need to contact to to manage the process, and they find the right solution. And now they are searching for partners uh, around the globe and searching for the right business model, how to make it global success. And the fifth uh, challenge is connected with the Edgar, Edgar company, which developed the the platform for storytelling. And they asked young people to help them to understand the, the, the youth and to find the best solutions to, for youth to tell their stories. These were five startup cases, and um, it's my pleasure to, to listen to their solutions. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Matej. And again, uh, I was asked uh, kindly for the judges to fill out the, the forms after each presentation. Uh, that's the official. But now I invite the first, the first uh, presentation. Uh, that's the eForma team. Come on, guys. IT in construction business. Good afternoon. Let me give you a scene to begin with. The construction industry, in today's terms, involves multiple players, and it's messy. The thing is, change has to happen, and that is where eForma comes in. eForma is an online platform where it allows players to collaborate on projects. But there's a small problem. The Slovenian market is simply too small. And these guys need to expand aggressively. Where? Australia. So this is where we help them. So let me give you an example of um, the players that are in the system. We have the private investors. We have the companies. We also have the constructors. Contractors, we have the architects. We also have the builders and the craftsmen. You see, there's so many moving parts in the system that things can simply go wrong. What about these guys? When we talked to the founders, what they said is that they literally had to cold call these guys to get them to come into the system. And cold calling is not scalable. We think we know the solution, and we know it. And we know you're going to like it. Thank you. So basically, our motto is go global, act local. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? So basically, it means that on our way towards infinity, we'll take care of the local need of the market. So basically, we have three solutions, uh, which are very simple, but yet effective. First of all, uh, unions, AKA, how are they called? Yeah, Združenje. So basically, unions offer so many opportunities and projects for collaboration, that it's basically a crime not to use them, and we will abuse them. Second of all, <laughs> thank you. Second of all, media. Media is a very, very, very important part in society and a way for people to get insight into your job. So uh, let's say an example. 
we'll form this, uh, we'll make this uh, outrageous public event where a ghost uh, in investor will have only 100 euros and we will find a contractor who will build a cardboard, cardboard house. Yeah. Uh, third of all, youth. Youth is a very, very important part in the society and we take care of the youth. So it's a principle of you scratch my back, I scratch yours. We'll contact every single unemployed architect on the market and every single architecture student and we'll give them a chance to place their ideas up, up on our website. For return, they'll have to, in a way, yeah, spread the word. So basically, these three, the three ideas are very, very simple but effective. They tend for the local market. In the end, as a thank you, I would like to, in a way, call all, all of you to shout out our motto. Go global, act local. Go global, act local! Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the second finalist, let's start up. Yeah, uh, the ch challenges are to promote entrepreneurship in Maribor, and uh, they are looking forward for operational and financial sustainable model. The next is, uh, we have a Lucian with us. He's based this, uh, as Romania, and he's shifting to Slovenia because of his brother, Dan, and uh, he is looking forward to start a company. Uh, here we have Lucian. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, moved, uh, I moved here because I want to be close to my brother, and I do have in mind, I have several ideas in mind, but I don't believe that I have the right knowledge. Uh, for this in order to start my own company. At the, at the same time, uh, I don't know where I could find um, an office space. And more importantly, uh, how, where do I get the funds from? But there's also something on my mind. What, what if I fail? You know, recently, I, uh, I know a consultant who works for the university and I really hope that he can help me with further information. Thank you. Thank you. So what we have, we have 500 meter square office right now. Uh, we have a support from uh, university, government, and corporates, and uh, two full-time uh, consultants with us. Can we go for next? So here we have a model. To promote entrepreneurship, uh, we are suggesting quarterly model of conferences, where uh, people will share their real experiences. No hi-fi, no unreal stuff. So month one, business entrepreneurs will come and share their experiences. Uh, next month, woman entrepreneur, then social entrepreneur, and then demo day. Demo day means a startup of the Maribor and Slovenia people will come and share their experiences and journey. And if you want to expand more, you can uh, take a bus journey of 15 days across the Slovenia. Uh, next, we are suggesting a model to University of Maribor to start a master's program uh, for entrepreneurship, which can be one, one and a half year, but not only theoretical learning. It will be practical learning as well. So adding to the program uh, of the uh, uh, entrepreneurship, they start their business within the program, and they develop the program. Uh, and we have a special online web pl platform. You can visit our website as well. We, are, we already uh, developed it for you. Uh, we have a funding uh, special uh, platform in the website where we'll uh, provide crowdfunding and other uh, platform as well. The beauty of the program is we will give the salary to entrepreneurs. Sounds amazing. We are giving a job of an entrepreneur. Next slide, please. Uh, so what startups will get? Six month salary, mentorship, infrastructure, uh, consultancy services, uh, risk sharing and business partners. Now you are thinking where these funds will come from. So investor will give these funds uh, to each entrepreneur. And what they'll get, they'll get uh, business profit partnership uh, in return. Uh, next is we have incubation center, so all cost of infrastructure and everything is covered. And uh, other things are coming as a profit. Uh, and the next thing is uh, rent and costing is uh, covered by a startup. So it's a win-win-win uh, for all. And if you want to know the detail, uh, we shared uh, a financial uh, plan with, in detail financial plan with you in the Excel sheets. So judges can have a look in deep and we are open for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. That was again on time. Uh, the last theme is, uh, I will announce it as objectively as possible, is the team Edgar. <laughs> it's officially, yeah, my favorite. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead, Simon. Judges, please. 
try to look at it as objective. <laughs> Greetings, fellow storytellers. My name is Simon. I come from Maribor, and I would like to share with you a story. One of the best experiences of my life was the four years of living in Israel. I have very fond memories of Israel, and it was an experience I'll never forget. However, there are many stories I could not share because there was no such platform. While I was there, I used to volunteer at an animal shelter. There I took care of a dog named Shai. Shai and I grew quite fond of each other, and it was quite a bittersweet moment when she was adopted. You see, this experience, it made me a better person, but it's an experience I can't share anywhere, not even my LinkedIn profile. Next slide. So this is where Edgar comes in. Edgar is a social media tool which enables you to narrate your own life. Here, this is a, a joint community of craftsmen, of craftsmen who want to share their uh, stories and their products. But to understand uh, Edgar, you also have to understand how it monetizes. And the way it monetizes is that these, no, the one before, uh, the way it monetizes is that these craftsmen who want to submit their products have to pay royalties. And the companies who are looking for talent, they pay, they pay us to find the best talent in each community. And how do we find the best talent? Well, next slide. To understand that, you have to understand the, the community model of Edgar which we created. So for example, I'm interested in architecture, challenge future, and entrepreneurship. These are the three communities I join. And the bigger circles are the global communities of these fields. And the smaller the circles get, the more local these communities get. Um, and it's also important to know that Edgar is a field where you can Young people, young professionals can demonstrate their projects throughout life, what they've achieved so far, and what they hope to achieve in the future, or their travels in the world. And fellow storytellers, I would like to leave you with a quote said by Maya Angelou. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story within, inside of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. The first one is the Social Entrepreneurs Company presented by, oh well, Damian. I'm really nervous, I, I brought my, it's, it's not every day that I'm on stage, so I'm really happy. Yes, and uh, yes, uh, I actually forgot uh, the right, uh, so I'm just pretending I'm reading. I'm really nervous, as I said. So, but the four challenges in the social entrepreneurs' companies were, yes, the social kitchen was the first one with SAP and uh, Rizom. Uh, it is a challenge how to, uh, how to connect, uh, how to create a, a sustainable business model for a social kitchen where the people in need could get uh, fed in Maribor. So the second one was revitalize Maribor. You see, I can pronounce it. <laughs> uh, so to, how to revitalize Maribor and its uh, empty spaces by uh, TAP and uh, Mariborska Kolesarska Marija. The third one was a food cooperative uh, with TAP and uh, Zadruga Dobrina. Their challenge was how to connect farmers and local markets and so how to create a sustainable business model and come up with a fair price. And the final one was, food co uh, was the living courtyards, where we had two challenges on how to use the empty spaces, especially the courtyards in Maribor. So we had uh, five challengers, so that means five teams, in those four categories. Two in the living courtyards and one in each of the others. So yes, that's all from me. Damian. Yes, well said, Damian. Yes, well said, Damian, and here comes the first finalist. 
Okay. Okay, so it's again my, here comes the first finalist, ding, ding. Damian again. And the third, no, the second finalist is Revit uh, Revitalize, is it again? <laughs> Maribor and Useful Empty Spaces, please. Okay, uh, I'm also green, so I will try not to use the mic too. No, we are recording, sorry. Ah, okay. Hello, uh, we are the team who brought the best solution of revitalization, Maribor. Next slide, please. And the next. <laughs> the challenge was like uh, to find the most sustainable way of increasing Karoshka Street's attractiveness. And the solution is the making of a new street workout training ground with the free activities for the young people. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, you probably ask yourself what the street workout is. I will explain uh, from my own experience. 
Uh, first of all, I've been like an ordinary 18-year-old guy with uh, all my fears. I will fulfilled with the fears. I've been stressed, confused, and uh, non-self-confident. -self but uh, I've discovered a new thing for myself that was a street workout. It's a, just a simple uh, combination of body weight exercising. And finally, I get fit. I became a fan of healthy lifestyle. And the most important thing, I just found community and the family for myself. OK, maybe some of you remember this guy. Uh, this is Maris Slezinsh. She uh, He's a, a head of a uh, World Street Workout Organization. And he performed on TEDx uh, Blade Conference last year. And he mentioned some facts about success of street workout in Riga. So we got about 15,000 active young people, led by 40 extremely talented volunteers. And we established about 38 street workout training grounds in the Riga. Next slide, please. Uh, OK. We do believe, if it's possible in Riga, that we can make another 15,000 happy and healthy young people in Maribor. And the street workout do exist in the Slovenia. And the volunteers of Slovenian street workout are ready to bring this culture to Maribor and to make a Karoška street as the mecca of street workout. So as we all know that uh, all the big goals can be only achieved with the small steps. And the first small step is uh, establishing of a new training ground of street workout in the Karoška streets courtyard. So let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, that's the rules. So I just try to help. So the second team is ready, right? Uh, team 10, uh, Živa Dvorišća, uh, Living Courtyards. So are you ready to? Friends, citizens of Maribor, I'm here today to talk to you about Living Courtyards project. And when I talked to a few of you from Maribor, you told me that during the Yugoslavian times, Maribor was an industrial city with a culture that it was proud of. But now, it's known as a city of ghosts by some people from Ljubljana. So why is this happening? There's something wrong. When we analyzed the situation, we realized that the problem lay in the courtyards because this was the center of culture and community in the previous times. And there's something lacking now because when I talked to my friends, they told me that people don't even talk to each other when they go into the courtyards. So how do we fix this problem? So <laughs> next. So we get together the people of Maribor, we get together the local businesses, the cultural professionals, the students to come together and then unite them with one common cause, which is to define a new cultural identity for Maribor, which is something they would be proud of. So how are we going to do this? There are two types of courtyards. One are public courtyards, which are not used by anyone. These could be like even church courtyards. And the wonderful ladies there are actually organizing amazing events like you saw previously. But our main focus is on another type of courtyards, which are the personal courtyards. These are actually hidden away by people and it's for the community itself. So we thought, for a sleepy town, the best answer would be to create a challenge, and we need some excitement. So why don't we make a new type of idea called Adopt a Courtyard, where essentially students and businesses come together and adopt a courtyard. What they do, essentially, talk to the community, understand what they really like. This could be galleries, paintings, it could be community gardens, it could be many other things, but its main thing is to understand what they like and then implement it. And what we'll do is have a model courtyard every month and have it updated on the website regularly so that Maribor can be proud of its diverse courtyards. Next. So we'll end this all with one annual festival every year for the whole of Slovenia or pro probably even the world to come down and see the different unique stories in each courtyard. Because my friend told me that the courtyard's actually hidden away. And we thought this is a problem. But actually, that's an opportunity. Why? Because it's hidden away, but like each person has a unique personality, the same way each courtyard has a hidden story. So why not have the festival as a platform for us to find out about the unique stories in each courtyard, the unique culture of each courtyard, and that's when we really know what Maribor stands for. Thank you. A 
Okay, thank you all. But before we go to the round table uh, headed by our dear rector, uh, I kindly ask the judges to uh, uh, finish the grading. You have to select up to three. So that means exactly three. <laughs> exactly three finalists. Uh, yeah, and grade them and then three. And then we we'll then we'll collect. I have so many signs here now. So, uh, I hope I get it correctly. The three finalists you choose. And then Dan will collect the sheets. You have to sign the sheets. Uh, and I think that's it. Did I forget something? Sorry. Okay, meanwhile, we will invite Daniel Lerbol, who is leading the roundtable Education for the Future Jobs. With him, there are the winners of Challenge Future, My Dream Job, and Dream Education in 2022 competition. Okay, and joined by, of course, Karin Stana Kleinstück, the Vice Rector, University of Maribor, and Matej Kosi from the Career Center Maribor. Please. You're ready, right? I can also dance or something. Okay, can we, uh, can we begin? Hello? Half of you is missing. Hello? Half of you is missing. Where are they? Okay, uh, in any case, we will start with this round table, uh, which is about the projects that have been um, sent to the topic, to the, to the theme, my dream job. And then the second one, uh, uh, which, which were handed out by those teams that, that were the best in that first round, the dream education in 2022. Um, so this was that competition, and now we have uh, five, uh, five, five, five participants, or those those who got the best uh, reviews, uh, who should now present their ideas. Um, about a dream job and the dream education in 2022. I su suppose and suggest that these two stories will be uh, merged somehow. And uh, then after that, we will uh, continue with uh, seeing how this fits the strategy of our university and how this fits the um, career of our students and then we'll have a discussion. So this is the plan. Now let's try it. Right, so you have two to three minutes to uh, present this story. Um, this is the five teams, right? Three teams? Why do I have five teams here? I don't know. <laughs> ah, okay, five people. But in any case, you now have uh, the opportunity to present your story. Where should we start? Just on the on the right, right? Ah, yes. Okay. I, me, you're the first. Uh, yeah, you, you, you just feel comfortable, whatever you like. You can fly around if you like. <laughs> Thank you. So, how do we train students for jobs and industries that haven't even been created yet? Well, the answer to this is training them in not only the most high-level technical skills, but also developing their social and psychological skills so they can work in an ever-changing environment. My strategy, the Across Industry Four-Part Education System, does just this. It includes MOOCs, augmented reality, neuroimaging techniques, and mentorship. MOOCs develop the technical skills, while augmented reality develops the... Thank you. 
uh, practical skills, neuroimaging techniques develop the psychological skills, and mentorship develops the, thank you, uh, provides access to experience. Now MOOCs are massive open online courses. These are online courses that provide exams and different uh, education systems so that students are able to access education no matter where they are, breaking down the geographical boundaries. Thank you. They allow for specialised and quality instruction, have unlimited scalability and individualised learning. Now, augmented reality is when uh, students are able to implement different strategies in a virtual world, which is a safe environment. The benefits of this are that they can see the outcomes of their decisions in real time. It employs a holistic approach, and our research says that it dramatically improves academic performance and engagement. Now, for neuroimaging techniques, this is when a, a scan is taken of the brain to determine how someone reacts in a highly pressured situation. This is, allows us to see how students, uh, allows us to train students to cope in highly stressful situations, which they will face in the future. It's fulfilling the duty of care for the psychological benefit of the employee and also produces a known indicative response to a high pressure situation. Now, mentorship is, our, is the final component, and it is already employed in universities. But with the increase in online systems, this is becoming even more important. So mentorship will provide motivation to students, allows them access to a wealth of experience, and also, research has said that mentors will begin to replace academic staff, as they will provide students with, the, uh, provide students with insight into the industry with these online courses. Thank you. Thank now, you. Oh, sorry, I thought you you, you finished. Right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, sorry. My, uh, <laughs> the job I chose as uh, my future job was to be a member of the Global Crisis Management Team. So to apply this education system to that, uh, for the MOOCs, we would have courses in cross-cultural management, crisis management, and disease management, and all these different online methods. For the augmented reality, this would allow the students to determine whether their strategies would be successful in a safe environment. So we would be able to manipulate the different uh, visual temperature and sound to allow this to occur. Now for the neuroimaging techniques, this would allow us to determine whether the student is actually able to cope with these highly pressured situations, and the mentorship would provide a connection uh, with the real world and therefore provide these students with uh, access to a wealth of experience. Uh, the, finally, the benefits of this. Thank you. Keep going. Uh, the benefits of this system are that it addresses current economic, business, and technology trends. It's supported by consultation with a number of academics, industry professionals, and students, and can be implemented across industries. Although there are many challenges which it needs to be which need to be overcome, academic research is currently in addressing these. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, let's continue. Anida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Anida Chmanchenin, as you can see, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I just want to thank you all for coming here, especially you guys from Druga Gymnasia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and uh, the other two members of our team actually weren't able to come, and they are Gayatri Kamarajan and uh, uh, Shibam Sarpsva from India. So uh, I'll just tell you a short story about our fictional character. We called her Emma. So Emma is a mother. She's an architecture. She's an entrepreneur. And she lives in 2022. So. Uh, she just came from a business meeting with her client uh, in, virtual, in virtual office. So this uh, business client wants her to actually plan and design building that will be in desert, have uh, adaptable air conditioning system, uh, have excellent water supplying system. It will be like colorful and it will be uh, innovative, it will be beautiful, uh, energy efficient and so on. So it's not actually an easy task for her. And what she does, she actually asks for advice, her mentor. So who is her mentor? It's actually the nature. And by this, I don't mean like she's going out there and you know, talking crazy to trees and bees. She actually observes nature 
and she looks uh, at the ideas that nature provides for this solution. Then she imitates this design and imitates the process of this nature. And in science, it is called like biomimic or biomimicry. So uh, for this building, uh, she is inspired by termite, termite molds and self-cooling system. And for example, for water supply, it's uh, redwoods and so on and so on. So, uh, how actually she knows uh, what to look in the nature and uh, how to find these ideas? It's due to her education. So, her education, it was decentralized, it was active, it was adaptive, it was cooperative. And uh, her professor, professor, yeah, uh, he actually uh, learned her how to orchestrate with this process, with this biomimicry. So she knows just where to find the solution and how to implement it on the project that she works. So, for example, uh, during her education, on senior year, they had to um, find solution for um, building facade. And uh, they find solution in lotus. So they uh, experiment with this solution in virtual lab. And uh, she actually resolved this uh, problem. She uh, made a plan and designed this building. And it wasn't just sustainable building. It was what is also important. It was adaptable. So as Charles Darwin once said, it's not that the strongest species will survive, nor are the smartest, but the adaptable one to the change. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. <clears throat> Okay, Siddharth, it's your turn. Dear friends, fellow change makers and educators, today, humanity faces a multitude of crises. 925 million people still suffer from chronic hunger. 1.3 billion people do not have access to electricity and $1.28 trillion is wasted due to corruption in developing countries. As a student of the current education system, I do not feel empowered to do anything about all of this. Just last year, I volunteered in Granat Initiative, and we discovered that there's a new way. I'm going to take you through our university. It's a university which is open where people of any age and any gender and people from all over the world can come in to our living classroom close to nature and work together on organic farms, on uh, craftsmanship, on building, and other sustainable practices which are practiced throughout the campus. It's a place where there's a community of architects, designers, engineers, farmers working together and collaborating instead of competing to learn from each other and it's also a place where engineers not only learn from a, as an apprentice from their mentors, but also they learn empathy by looking at different cultures and understanding them. Finally, our uh, whole campus is a prototyping ground. It's a place to test solutions for humanity. It's a place where we encourage students to go out of their comfort zones, to take risks, because that's the only way that we can develop real initiatives. It's a place where products like the smokeless wooden stove are developed, which are really needed by developing countries all over the world. This is what we feel is needed for an education system, one that's focusing on the character of the person and that's solving problems that humanity sorely needs. My friends, we always talk about that, the fact that we want to uh, untap the potential of students in our education system, but we think this is the way. We think that what we're developing in Singapore, called the Singapore Open University of Life, is the way. And in short, it's called Seoul. We believe that this Seoul is not only needed in Singapore, but in every country in the world. Because what we think is that this is such a platform which gives an environment, a community, an opportunity for students, will, then only will the students have the power or even the faith to create their own jobs. In short, this education system will give them freedom.
Thank you. That was a great introduction uh, into what your dreams were about your future, but also our future as researchers, educators, mentors. Um, right. Now, I would like to ask uh, the Vice Rector for uh, Research at our university um, to reflect on your ideas with the strategy and, and vision of our university. So let's see how this gets together. So thank you, Daniel. Thank you, all of you. I'm really very happy to see all these young people sitting in Slovenia and Maribor because we are pretty sure that the future is in your hands and therefore also our strategy is based on the young talent. We called uh, the strategy or the whole idea behind is reinvention. So why reinvention? Of course, invention of something new. Then we think that energy is needed and the younger population has this energy these new ideas, and then we are pretty sure that we must build, that we must develop everything on the talent. And a lot of talent is we, we always have, and we are pretty sure that we have it in young population. And we heard today quite a lot of things. So uh, we uh, called the strategy Innovative Open Technologies, so you also spoke today about open, so open success. So we put in the, in the really in the, the main point focus the innovation uh, and all activities what you uh, uh, also discovered these last two days here in Maribor in Razum, the team of Razum, uh, uh, Matei spent a lot of time with you, so this is the young talent how we can really support the startups, the entrepreneurship uh, uh, thinking. Therefore, we also said that uh, university would like to be innovative ecosystem. So we put it really this entrepreneurship in the, as a main focus in our strategy. We also invited the colleagues from uh, 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 the northern countries, from Demola, uh, to, to really discover the new pr uh, products or, or uh, startups <laughs> together with our industries, this is one part. Then we think that we need to build really infrastructure programs which are based on new technologies, as photonic, as functional materials, so the new way to put together the young ideas, new ideas, but really on focused technologies for the future. Uh, and of course, we, uh, we heard today quite often health, health, health. And we put it, our, our smart specialization in the strategy, and we said that university will be very much focused in the future on one main research area, and this is health, demographic changes, and well-being. Because well-being is everything what is important for our lives, for your lives, but as well as our lives, because we really would like to be happy also in our times where we are not so young as you. So in, with this strategy, we think that we have these components which are very important, what we heard also today from you. So we would like to be inclusive, so we would like to, to, to uh, connect uh, different parts, so young, old guys, somebody with uh, not a lot of experience, with somebody who has a, a very huge experience then, we would like to develop uh, sustainable uh, strategies, and this is very important to be sustainable for some period of time, and interdisciplinary. And everything what you hear today was focused pretty much on this, that we should collect the knowledge from different fields of research. But quite often you all spoke about this uh, well-being, so what we can do for the future, and we think that we can do together uh, a lot, and therefore our career center is very intensively involved in all these strategies to help our younger people, to help us older to be in this well-being mood. So this is the strategy. Thank you, Karin. I think you have put it uh, very 
precise, and uh, I hope you got the the idea of what we want to do. We are not a very common university, I would say, according to our vision and uh, what we intend to do. Um, before I give the word to Matei, I would just like to ask you to also send some questions to that Twitter site or, or hashtag, since um, we will also take some from there. Um, and now, Matei, it's your. Thank you. Um, I must say I was very uh, pleased and uh, the presentations of all presenters were very interesting. Um, I must say that uh, when I was born, the computer was the size of this room. Now it is the size of a cell phone, that's small. And who knows what will be when I will be a grandpa. And, uh, but still, they are in a box. And our role, the role of a career center within the strategy exposed, uh, is um, to motivate young youngsters uh, to think creatively, to think out of the box, uh, to think uh, what they uh, might or can do, and how can they create their own job uh, the way they like it, the way they want it. And uh, one role is also to give them the environment, the support, uh, to foster them and to uh, make them able to do things. So in a way that we are mentors and uh, the one that are uh, giving them some kind of support. Uh, so yes, um, career development, uh, career planning uh, and uh, all the activities connected within the career are on our priority lists, but uh, list. But we also realize that the motivation and the ideas and the um, challenge that is in front of all of us is uh, something that uh, needs to be uh, the force for all uh, the youngsters. So my idea is that. Uh, we should go on, we should be creative, we should be reactive and not just active and uh, we should be all proactive and that is the solution for a better environment and for better universities and for better uh, jobs in future. Thank you, Matej. Um, this was kind of short introduction to a discussion which is the main point of every round table, right? Um, so it's now your turn. Uh, you can either comment or ask or simply discuss. Uh, enlighten us with your statement, visions. So, the floor is yours. Yeah. And as I said, you can use the Twitter to send questions. I was too. just tweeting it, but now, since no one else <laughs> raised the hand, I thought, why not uh, ask it like this? First of all, thank you for the presentation, guys. It was amazing. I like both three, the three ideas. I, I am very familiar with them already. But my question would be more to the team of uh, University of Maribor, uh, respected Professor Daniel Rebol, rector or um, everyone who thinks that they have something to comment on the topic of the future of learning. I'm interested how do you see the future of learning and where do you see the position of the universities we have today in that future of learning? Of course, you can also tackle the topic of where is the position of University of Maribor maybe in all that. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would need a few hours to discuss this question. Uh, because it it's really is not easy to find a way among all these opportunities and challenges and new trends, technology and everything. Uh, however, we are pretty sure that each university will have to, the one that wants to stay or uh, remain uh, a university, to, to be well uh, founded on, on values, on the traditional values of, um, well, 
on the basic um, mission of a university, which is to really um, enthusiastically search for new knowledge and to enthusiastically share this knowledge with the new generations. Um, of course, the modes of, of researching and sharing will change and is changing very rapidly. And I believe in 10 years, a university will look very different from today. Uh, just to mention the MOOCs, at our university we are working very, very much on this topic, um, creating new prototypes, uh, playing with, with what is already um, uh, available. But not only this, um, there is another point which actually is not new at all. Uh, Confucius already said that uh, involve me and I will understand, but we are still very often doing, not doing it in that right way, but trying just to lecture, which is uh, not really productive. Um, so this um, involvement and, and learning by doing and learning through projects and problems, so problem-oriented, but of course, well-funded on some um, um, good traditional knowledge, I would say, like mathematics or, you know, you can't really solve problems with, with a shallow knowledge of, you know, knowing uh, nothing about everything, uh, which quite often is the case. You can't simply find every needed knowledge instantly on the web. Uh, you can read about a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but if you want to understand it, you have to study deeper. And however, this is just one uh, column, I would say. The other is then use this knowledge in some problem-oriented projects where you need good mentors and where you really need the university environment. For the first one, MOOCs are well. They, you can really learn the basics. I mean, you can get the knowledge of, of very many things, but to use this knowledge, you need a team, you need a good mentor, you need labs, you need the university environment. So I think the role of the university is already changing and uh, the University of Maribor in this respect doesn't want to follow, but we want to lead. Excuse me, sorry, if I may add something. Sure. Uh, on the topic of future of learning, many people ask this question, but I believe that the future is actually in the past. And like uh, Professor said about Confucius, there was another thing he said about education. There are three types of learning, and it's not changed for a long time. The first one is the noblest, which is by reflection. We are so busy in our everyday lives that we are competing, competing, but we don't step back to reflect on what we learn. The second type is by imitation. We look down on copy, copying, but then in an open world, that is the future. Technology is changing, but then we, are, we believe in an open future. And the last type of learning, he said, is by experience, which is the bitterest. And that's what we're talking about in terms of entrepreneurship. That's when you need students to come out of their comfort zones and to start something, and you give them the opportunity. So what Confucius talked about centuries ago is still relevant today. So the future actually lies in the past. Good, good Well, I, I hope we, we have uh, um, as many as possible of such students. Um, there was another question, or if anyone wants to comment, um, just grab the microphone away from me. Um, I, there, yeah, there's another question I want to just read here, uh, which is how our university wants to internationalize the university. Um, we do have some, um, let's say, obstacles in internationalizing our university <coughs> in Slovenia in general because there are some rules, uh, some law regarding the language. Um, since it is a small language, there are some people that really are scared to uh, give, let's say, courses in English only. Uh, 
but everything we give in English has to be in Slovenian as well. And this is, I mean, <laughs> it's not easy to do. In any case, um, we believe that through, through the new technologies, through MOOCs and everything, we um, will reach a much broader population. Um, however, there will be many other universities that are trying the same. So, the other way, of course, is to attract um, students through um, this awareness uh, of uh, what really is needed. And this is the uh, combination of research and education. So, one, one thing that uh, our vice director, that Karin also repeats all the time is, research is education, is research, is education, and so on. So, it, it's a circle. Um, and, yeah, we believe that through time, uh, constantly working on this new type of university, we will become um, popular and attractive. Um, so this should, we want to become a magnet, not uh, a university with a strong PR. No, the quality uh, and our open concepts should work for us and attract many um, foreign, not foreign, but international uh, students and professors, of course. Yeah, perhaps only to add uh, on your uh, very good discussion or uh, disappointment. So, as Richter said, I think that we need this excellent research, and excellent research must always be on with this cutting edge results. But this is the, the main issue, so we cannot only educate, we must always include this research in our first classes, but then also postdoctoral or doctor students or programs or the, through the whole uh, program. And it is very important that our researchers are very young, because the, the very young people are those who are the most innovative. The most innovative and also talented to be very, very good in translation their ideas in their own companies. So it is extremely important to connect these cutting edge results with entrepreneurship very soon, so very soon in the career, not to wait if that, that the, the, the uh, students are finishing with their PhD programs, because at that sta uh, stage they are already very good researcher, but perhaps they are not so good innovator anymore, because they are not so um, uh, uh, powered uh, as in their young, very starting position. So I think that this is extremely important to connect the excellent research with talented young researcher, but not those who are already in their postdoctoral step. Yes, and uh, all that was mentioned before, I believe that soft skills are the one that uh, need to be um, developed uh, in um, higher levels uh, because, uh, yes, uh, the knowledge is important and, um, as, uh, and uh, all these activities are important, but uh, within the developing skills, uh, like just now on this event, uh, when youngsters have to uh, present their activities, uh, now they are involving uh, uh, in these uh, roundtables, that uh, will give them uh, the new uh, necessary uh, knowledge and, of course, skills um, when they will have to pre uh, when they will have to persuade uh, their employers, uh, employers, uh, and uh, when they will um, uh, be at a job interview. So all this uh, at the time of studying is uh, very important and uh, useful. Thanks. Now there was a question, I think. Yes, I know. Thank you. In fact, I have a question and a request. So I'm hope you can uh, you can help me with that. So I wanna I wanna basically uh, tie into what Sidor just said. Uh, which has to do with imitation, reflection, and experience. You mention research and education a lot. And in my opinion, research is reflection. 
And education has a lot to do with imitation, especially if you're lecturing. But I wonder where experience is. And I feel experience is a very strong tie with expression. And today we were at this high school with this unpronounceable name. And um, they were really expressing themselves a lot. And we could really see the, see the fruits of that. They were able to learn something. Like this, this guy told me everything about the bridges and what age they were built and how long it took. And uh, So he clearly was educated. This education is probably based on research. But he had the experience through expression in order to share that with us. It kind of ties in with what you said. So I really wonder if you see a place for expression in your cycle of research and education, and more importantly, how you would benefit that, how, how you would execute that. So that's the question, and now that a request, you forced us to tell things in three minutes very concisely, very crisply. So could you answer this question in 10 sentences? I'll try in five, <laughs> but a bit longer ones. <laughs> well, um, I don't see research only in a reflection. Uh, I understand it as a, um, not just searching, but in, in uh, widening the consciousness to recognize some new patterns, some new well, laws of nature, of, of society, of anything. So I wouldn't put it as a reflection. It is rather a cognition, cognition, not recognition. Um, and now, of course, the expression is as important as the impression. Both is necessary. And education comes in on both, uh, on both sides, I would say. Education is... Um, well, making a spiral out of this circle. My one sentence? I only have one sentence. Well, okay. I think that research is, is an initiation for a good education. This is one sentence. Okay. Um, anyone has a reflection here? No, if you do, just, yeah? I have something to add about Jasper's um, comment about expression. So I'd like to share a little bit about me. I'm from Malaysia. I'm Malaysian Chinese and I study in Singapore and I like art a lot. So recently I participated in an art exhibition in my school and I was censored. So basically what the school authorities did was they covered a black cloth over my art without me being there and said, no, you cannot put your artwork there. So my... my um, so my problem with the education nowadays is that they limit expression. That expression only comes at the benefits, if it benefits the university's reputation. Okay. Um, so a little bit of background on my artwork. My artwork was actually titled, Too Bad You're Malaysian Chinese, based on my personal experience. However, the school authorities found that it infringed on political expression, which could potentially damage the political um, relationship between Singapore and Malaysia, which was... Which was, quite, um, which was quite big for me as just a student artist, which I never had the intention you know, of bringing such political relations inside. So um, I would also like to let everyone think about how far and how much should we let student expression come into schools and how can we support that? You see, Because many of us are stifled into going to these modules and research and academia, but really, what is the most important form of education? It's, it's, for me, I believe, is to express ourselves, is to empower others. However, this comes at the expense of maintaining relations, interests, and relationships of the university's reputation at large. So, yes, so this is my sharing. May I just add uh, something to that answer? I think there was only four statements. <laughs> Um, namely, um, of course, this, the, the um, research is rather a, a cognitive process that, that goes in, I would say, or is happening inside of someone. 
whereby the expression is that other way out. And I would say it is the creativity, it's the creative part. So not just presenting your ideas, but doing something. So the creative part, and both are of course necessary in an educational process. To learn something, to create something, to learn something, to create, and doing this in a team is a marvelous experience. Right. Any further question, please? Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, like, answers are good. I mean, reflections, learning, some good jargons, and soft scale experience. Like, this seems amazing. This sounds good. But we are doing the same thing since the last few hundred years. Reflection, research, soft skills. Like, soft skills, they are, like, we are designed to not to be unreal. I mean, you know, we are being unreal. We're designed to, you, you, you need to behave like this, you need to behave like this. Don't share your uh, real, uh, real feeling. I mean, that's, that's how we are designing soft skills. So, uh, uh, research, reflections, and soft skills are good, but we need to change this methodology drastically. This is going on the wrong side. So, yesterday's pro solutions became today's problem, and today's solution which you, are, you might implement will become tomorrow's problem. So, my question is, why the education, which we are talking, the future of education, why education is always unreal? Why in industry people say that you are in school, but you don't know anything? First you come to industry and then you realize. In fact, everybody studied and, and they, they, everybody might feeling that, okay, what we studied in school, there is nothing in uh, uh, real industry. And, and this is the reality and if everybody knows that, then why nothing is changing? Why research is not happening on this? Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but it is changing. Uh, Vice Rector mentioned Demola, uh, but didn't explain what it is. This is just one example. Uh, Demola is a kind of demonstration lab. Uh, it is a kind of pattern or, or process where companies introduce their problems, define them well, and then the university finds teams that from various faculties, mainly students of course, who then respond to these given problems, using their knowledge, mentors, professors helping them in solving the problem, and then they introduce this solution to the company, and the company takes it or not, but in any case, it is working on a real problem. And if they are successful, this is a perfect way for a startup this is a perfect way for a patent, for some innovation. So this is how I believe it should work and how this circle should close. Not with some abstract problems. Of course, if you like to learn the foundations, you sometimes have to go to the abstractions. But then at the end, you need to use this knowledge in real problems. And this is exactly what we are doing already. And this is exactly what why we... Um, build a resume, which is the bridge between the university and its environment. So we do change. I would uh, like to build on the, what Jasper and uh, Yatin said. Um, you said that you try to insert the research uh, from the first class to the university, but are we going to make all the students uh, doctors? or engineers or something, because some of them might not get there. Um, research, research doesn't necessarily mean um, doing a PhD. It's, it can start actually with a primary school, which means involving students into the process of looking, searching, seeking for new knowledge to how should I put it, to, to cooperate, to, to do it together with the already experienced researchers, to take part in, in some new exper um, yes, experiences and experiments. Um, so not, not just uh, high science research, but research of many things. Yeah, but I'm saying that um, we might have uh, professional schools. 
for example, some some of the um, of the kids would like to have another kind of education, like practical, very practical. So, so I don't know, yeah. like being a tailor. No, when the discussion became very interesting. <laughs> but yes, of course, um, we can continue. Yeah, yes, please do. You have mentioned that these soft skills are very important. What are the three most important soft skills which you think needs to be improved and how? Thank you. The three most important. Um, the inner energy might not be a soft skill, but it is very important for employers. Yeah, the motivation and uh, motivation and, uh, the three and uh, being flexible. These are the three most common, and I, with this, uh, youngsters can achieve a lot. Uh, uh, it gives them the opportunity to move in all the different uh, areas and all the different uh, approaches uh, and all in and in all different uh, environment how uh, it takes time <laughs> uh, no uh, I mean uh, we organize events uh, where we uh, show the good uh, case of practice but uh, of course you have to do it by yourself and uh, with uh, with uh, let's say uh, with experience within the experience you have to be put in a, a, some kind of activities you can do it while studying and uh, uh, volunteering in uh, some kind of activities you can uh, uh, be uh, you can we have a work within the student uh, uh, office we uh, provide our students to work while studying so there are uh, many opportunities, but uh, it takes time. And uh, when being at the university and while studying, it's not, uh, I must admit, it is not uh, so easy to work other activities. But uh, I believe uh, eight hours per day it is not enough. It ha you have to put uh, a, lot of, a lot more uh, time and energy uh, into it. So let's say 10 hours or even more per day. Uh, can I can I just, just comment? Just, because just a second, just a second, please, because there is an, uh, uh, a question here that we, yeah, you could. I will answer Sorry, on the Twitter. Can okay? I just say something about soft skills? No, just one short comment. We are doing a project on soft skills in University of Ljubljana in November, and it's called November. So there, if there is somebody from University of Maribor that would like to implement this project in Maribor, you can basically just copy-paste it and do all the work here. Like, just approach me after this session. Thank you. Okay. We can continue on Twitter and on other media, but... Uh I think we will be thrown out now. Uh, sorry, I just want to conclude by saying that it's very easy to point fingers and try to say that was the system is wrong, system is screwed up, and we all know there's something wrong with the system. So instead of pointing fingers, you need to also ask yourself, how can we change the system and how can we be uh, part of the change? So there's only two two things you can do. You can be a part of the solution or you can be apart from the solution. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you all the participants. But dear Rector Daniel Rebo, we will invite you to stay on us with, on the stage. Because now we will announce the final winners. We also invite Andrea Codrin, the Challenge Future founder, to please enjoy. Join us on the stage.
Okay, and firstly we invite, I see he's already arrived, uh, Igor Vrichko, can you join us? Uh, you can also sit and then join us, uh, but it's your turn to give the, give the reward for, the, for your challenge, the corporate challenge. So are you ready? Okay, so the first winner will be announced by Dr. Igor Vrichko. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, now I see it. Okay, um, it was a great pleasure for me and for my colleagues to to be uh, among those who tried to charge uh, you and to to really be happy with the result we have seen today. And it's my pleasure to announce who is the winner in the first group group of corporate uh, cases or corporate. Uh, problems we try to solve. So, yes, here we have the winner of corporate cases is team number four, Tevime Maribu, developing results for asthma patients. Well, well, the winner, uh, winners of this group are Silvia Dineva, <laughs> Natalia Hocheva, and Denis Pauch. Congratulations. And of course, you all get together one beautiful statue. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, maybe a few words for the, from, from the winners. Well, it was intense. I think really intense. Um, we we had like the first solution, like we had like different solutions. One was as well um, wellness for pets, for example, and that kind of thing. So yes, we finally came 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 together to this one, and we all worked actually. Um, so congratulations as well to my team members, and thank you for for recognizing us as the best ones. Thank you very much. The second, okay, the second uh, da, 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 is the winner of Startup Solution presented by Materus. Thank you. So let's see what we got. So the winner of the Startup Solutions is the Team 7, Edgar. Okay, the team. So the team members are, okay, shall we start with this Simon? <laughs> Thank you. Ali? I hope that I will not uh, read it uh, wrongly. Koru Haisini. <laughs> and uh, Winnie Tia Hayana. <laughs> and the statue.
but I, I think you need some other microphone, so, okay. They have. Is this thing on? All right. So first off, uh, thank you very much. And uh, second off, Edgar tells .me already works, so you should post your stories from Challenge Future on it. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to reading your stories. Thank you very much. OK. Damian Oba will announce the winner of Social Entrepreneurs. I will not put my tie on. <laughs> I really hope it, uh, uh, it didn't influence my lobbying, or it did. I don't care. No, I'm joking, but I can vote for the team. I was the mentor. Uh, so I can vote for the team. As, and what they did is already implemented. So we can start using it today. So we actually can use it. Uh, so I really vouch for them, and if you want to review the source code and designs, you can do that. Uh, now it's really working, so uh, that's a disclaimer again. And I'm really happy to announce the winner, I don't know who's the winner, in the social cases. Uh, can you help me, please, director? <laughs> I feel so good, I kicked the director out of the, the stage, and I don't know if you know it, but I should get my PhD on 7th of November, and I probably will not get it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, but now uh, let the fun uh, stop. The social winner is, in social entrepreneurs' cases, is the team number 10, Jiva Dvorishcha, Adapta Courtyard. Okay, so because I have Oscar here, it's again and nothing lobbying here. So, but if his presentation didn't work, so uh, okay. So Oscar Strain, Strain, yeah. There we go. Uh, ben Fugungor, is correct? And and Seed, shorter for Sidart, Rajo Paglan. Yes. <laughs> And the statue. I almost forgot. You're getting it. Okay, very good. Not, not yet. And finally, the grand Excuse winner me. of Maribor. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, uh, actually, I don't want to really say anything, but can I please invite Katya and Maya to come down? Because they are essentially, they are essentially doing something for Maribor, which is you guys. And maybe, maybe, they, maybe they have something to add and convince you why what they're doing is really awesome. <laughs> and you should be part of it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm just very proud of uh, both of the teams uh, and really very happy that uh, one of them won. And lots of beautiful ideas that you brought also into this colorful Maribor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now maybe it's the time to announce the grand winner. As Rebecca said, I think Andrea, Professor Rebold. Global Jumpstart meets Maribor Startup 2013 on the 23rd of September is Jiva Dvorishcha, Team 10.
So Oscar, 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 that's you. Congratulations again. Siddharth, congratulations. And Bengu, great job. And of course, the um, heavy parts of the... both of the I think everyone hears me yeah <laughs> but we are going to try to implement both of the ideas and thank you <laughs> okay but before we all leave uh, Rebecca will have to say something okay of course congratulations to all the winners but this is not it we are not satisfied yet so what about you dr. Rictor, what is your commitment that you will start implementing tomorrow? <sighs> but you can, you can think a bit and I will ask Nadia to join us and invite the other key listeners we chose carefully. Okay, okay. Well, I think that um, <laughs> actually we, we already thought of it uh, during the review process of the project. And um, in general, I think that, not only in general, in, in, in very concrete, um, it somehow started to, to work somehow. The ideas you put out, you, you, your, your scenarios have uh, influenced the scenarios we did for the university. Maybe not necessarily, you know, very consciously, but um, if I look back, I can see that there is lots of compliments, there is lots of, um, uh, lots of, yeah, synergies going on. Um, because really in these days or in this month, we are creating, formulating the um, strategy for our university. Um, very openly, students involved and, and invited, of course. Um, so that what we want to become is really a university which is open, which is really making the whole education um, joyful and um, exciting, not boring, but something that where, where the students and the professors will enjoy. We will together look for the new knowledge, where we will together um, get new insights, share them, and make the whole university a good place, um, exciting place, but also a place that will be a university for the future. Thank you. Thank you. So what we hear is a commitment to make fun, exciting, and full of life university, and that's a big commitment. I know that today was a very exciting up and down, full of energy event, but we don't want it to be the end of something. We hope that this is just a conversation starter for Maribor community. It's action starter for the Maribor community. And the good thing 
there's a global community of youth that is on your side. We wanted to invite some amazing people from this community to come, feel your energy, hear your ideas, and share their commitments. Very simple uh, decisions, very simple desires that they have for this community. So I would like to invite to the stage, and we would like to uh, invite all of the keynote listeners to join me on the stage. We have with us, of course, Bor Troy, CEO of Termi Maribor. We have with us Alex Haus, president of the board of New KMBM Bank. Please do, join me right here. We have with us Alien Kahren from Spirit. We have with us Ivan Norencic, principal of the Druga Gymnasia of Maribor. And on behalf of Natalia Pastrushnik, we have with us also um, Dr. Mule. Please join us on the stage. And very important from Startup Maribor, Matei Rus. Join me. This is not met at all as big speeches. It's more of a conversation from heart to heart. So I will pass the microphone, and whoever feel like you would like to make a commitment and you feel it, go for it. I can make a commitment. As you uh, realized, the university has a clear strategy, clear focus. But uh, we alone cannot make uh, Maribor very good uh, entrepreneurial hub. So it's my commitment that we will work forward and we will connect all the potential partners together with the university that we will make this Maribor really successful and that till 2020 we will uh, help at least 200 new startups and create at least 500 new jobs. Dear Honorable Mr. Rector of the Mary Warren University, all professors and honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, the, the new strategy of our bank is to take a focus to the small and medium-sized companies. If you look, for example, Germany, more than 80% of the economy is result from the small and medium-sized companies. Every country with a stability economy has a lot has a high number of small and medium-sized companies and entrepreneurs. If the economy of each country contains a lot of small and medium-sized companies, this is the first sign for a stable economy because the dispersion of risk is very high. Uh, is very low, excuse me. S yes, yes, of course. It's, the risk is low, I have to say. So, as uh, Nova Kritna Banka Maribor is a new strategy, uh, we'll be focused on the small and medium sized company at least. Because the strategy to support big corporate today is not valid anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Because the big corporate has the international financial lines, but the small and medium sized company has to finance on their own. So, the purpose of our strategy is to, fully, to take a fully support for the financing of the small entrepreneurs, small and medium sized companies. And we believe that also for the Slovenian economy, we will be very, very best that this country at least will start to develop small and medium sized, and medium -sized companies economic sector because this is the only way to, 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 to reach the economic growth. So we strongly believe that our strategy will be successful, and all congratulations, all to us, all to you, students and ladies and gentlemen, for these brilliant ideas you have represented today in this meeting. Thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations to all, all the winners, of course, all the participants. My commitment to Maribor is maybe just to find the potentials in young people. In the age between 16 and 18, they develop, they find their creativity, which is most important. If they don't find the opportunity, their, their capabilities, their talents, probably they will waste their, their life. And high school as ours is the, is the time 
when you grow up and when you find out. I, I think that with the, our slogan, the school that opens all doors, we do that. We help young people, of course, with a lot of, with a lot of uh, things that uh, we offer, like 60 and other extracurricular activities. And maybe also one message here today from, the old, from all, that, uh, all those representations. Sometimes in Maribor, we should, have, we should think a little like out of Maribor. Do not just stay inside, circle around with the same people, with the same ideas, out of Maribor. And that's the idea how also I think our school just came where it, where it is today. Just it, we went out of school, out of our, 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 our location, our, our local community, and then it's, it's where you come. So out of Maribor, out of the box, I think is the message. Well, my commitment first, uh, I live in Maribor and I work in Ljubljana, which means traveling every day from the, the best city in Slovenia to a little less beautiful city in Ljubljana. That's my opinion. Which means, but I'm, I, don't, I, didn't, I wasn't born in Maribor, but I live here and I love it. And uh, I feel strongly about Maribor um, and uh, listening to the, the, today's ideas, I have to say, it almost made me cry, and as a part of the judge uh, commission, I was very happy the, the, about the winners, because I think that uh, that is what Maribor and the surrounding areas need today. First, the, the change of each of us, or each of you, which means that we start taking the responsibility of our own lives, and we start recognizing the personal potentials that we have. And then, that we have to start opening up. Opening up to people that are living around us, open up, opening up to people that are coming to, to visit Maribor from other countries or other areas. So, as my commitment, uh, I was also t this year appointed by the government uh, as the vice president of the commission uh, for um, special intervention measures for Maribor and the surrounding areas. And I have to say, I'm fighting very hard in Ljubljana that uh, people from, who live in Ljubljana and don't pretty much care about you know, what's going on in Maribor, they start recognizing what is the potential of Maribor together with the people living here. So I would say um, just the words of the well-known philosopher Saint-Exupéry who said, when I, want to, when I would like to build a boat, I don't need a bunch of people telling them what to do. I just need to inspire them to see and to reach up the open ocean. So I think that's something that the message that really, we really have to try to reach out and bring out the best of people. And I think that Maribor and the population here has, all, has it all. So a lot of uh, encouragement and, and, and brave heart for, for, for a better future. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Andrea and the team, uh, to organize such event here and to bring to Maribor uh, young and younger people. Uh, my commitment is, I have two commitments. First of all, first commitment, I already you know, somehow did it. As Andrea brought uh, Challenge Future to Maribor, I returned to Maribor after 15 years plus, so, but I drive from Ljubljana to Maribor on a daily basis. So maybe we can meet. <laughs> uh, <Here. laughs> yeah. So the second yeah. commitment, so the commitment that should happen is that, uh, you know, I, I returned to Maribor not just because the job was, job was offered to me, but uh, because I want to do f something for this town, for the community. And my commitment is that um, I'm willing to work with anybody that has the same goal, the same heart for, for this town, for the community, no matter where this person comes from. Uh, this could be a competitor from the, you know, another hotel, from the, another medical facility, but uh, I'm willing to sit down to work with that person and to find the solutions for, for this town. But I also have, have another commitment. I will not work with anybody that works based on exclusivity, because um, such kind of philosophy brought this country uh, where we are currently. Thank you. Thank you. 
as you see on the list and on my face, I'm not Natalia Postruznik. <clears throat> I was brought in the group a minute ago. I didn't know I would be here. So I had no time to prepare anyway. When you, my neighbors talk about returning, I came to think that I have returned to Maribor beyond 100 times because I used to work around the world and always came back. And I always came back with a big worry because uh, <clears throat> after 40 years of working on innovation management, I was always disappointed in Maribor. We could not get people <clears throat> out of the lethargy. Self-sufficiency killed Japan. There's a wonderful book about the decade of 1990 to 2000 about Japan talking about recovery from success. And Maribor so, was so very successful when the low technology was good enough for survival that it became too complacent. All the companies which died here and lost about 70,000 jobs died because they were not innovative enough. They were not holistic enough, and that this is what I committed my life to 60 years ago. Uh, I do this now through social responsibility, which says, by definition, this is the responsibility of everyone for his or her impacts over society. And it has two basic principles, interdependence and holism. The project I heard about today are all based on interdependence in the groups and are all aiming at holism as much as I could hear. This means I can congratulate them very well. So, so what commitments we have? We have at least 500 startups that should be here. 200? At least 200 starts up that should be here by 2020. And the bank is ready to finance the small and medium enterprises. We have a university who will supply those small and medium enterprises with outside, outstanding creative youth. And there will be a high school that will provide outstanding creative graduates to go to that outstanding and creative university. And then we have a community of people here who are working on partnerships who will all three support the interdependencies and partnerships that are not built on exclusivity, but will be very inclusive. So we hope that also, I speak on behalf of the entire Challenge Future community, that also commits to be ambassadors of Maribor. After we've been hosted here with so much love, with so much care, with so much support, we're in love with your city, and we'll make sure that even far, far away on another corner of the earth, somebody knows about Maribor and is ready to be part of it. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, and it's still on. So if you have a commitment, you can still tweet us and you can tweet us forever. And you can send us emails and post us or post any one of those if you need anything, right guys? I hope I can say that for all. But also, <laughs> sorry? Hashtag. Yeah, hashtag is all around the building. So commit, it's on the wall. It's better you, you read it and I pronounce it. Commit to as a number and MB. Yeah, yeah it's also where? It's on your list. Oh, that's good, yeah. In the program, in the program as well. But before you all leave and while you're leaving, while you are leaving, uh, take a closer look at this gallery that came to be today, and again, thanks to the lovely, lovely uh, young artists from the primary school, Franz Rosmanstana in Maribor, and thanks again to every one of you, and especially the participants. Okay. That's it. That's it. Wishing you really a happy and a positive evening. <laughs>